What's up guys? Welcome back to the PA Diaries. This is another video that we're going to be doing today. It's going to be us talking about how we study for anatomy, which is a very fun subject for both of us. And our program is very fortunate to where we actually have cadaver lab, mm -hmm. which is a lot of fun. So we're going to walk you through how we study for our cadaver lab practicals and our uh, lecture exams as well. Enjoy! So like she said, we are actually going to look at how we study for anatomy. And if you haven't done so already, we already did a video on how to study for clinical medicine and pathology. Um, so go ahead and look at those as well. And this is going to be a very different course than your pathology class and your clinical medicine course. Just because anatomy is going to be structured a little differently, we approach studying for this subject mm -hmm. in a little different way than we would our pathology and clinical medicine course. So let's go ahead and jump right into what we start with. Yeah, so we actually study anatomy extremely different. I really like anatomy and I will actually study for our anatomy lab two hours before our lab time. I do not like anatomy that much. Um, I'm just going to level with y'all. It is not my favorite subject, but it is something that is very important for me to know. Mm -hmm. So I did force myself to try to become friends with anatomy. Um, I suck at waking up early. So I didn't wake up two hours before lab, but I would try my best after lab to mm -hmm. go back through what we had covered in lab so that based on what I saw in the cadaver or based on what I heard in lecture, I could link it to something in my brain and that's kind of how I made it click for me. So I'm a very uh, visual person and I learn hands-on, right? So that is why anatomy lab is so important for me to actually understand the material before I go to lab, which is why I like to look at lab uh, our material before I go to lab. So one of the things I did is I would review the PowerPoints and also go into visible bodies. We're actually going to put a little clip of what a visible bodies is right here. It's actually an app that you can download and I believe during Black Friday or something, they have it for a dollar. I got it for 99 cents. So they have it for a dollar and it's originally... Do you not remember? It's a little bit expensive on the expensive side, but it really helps. Um, it has all of the bodies that, all the body systems that you're gonna learn about, and you can actually take away things. So if you wanted to remove the skin, you can remove the bones, remove the um, the arteries, and it's really helpful because as you're going through that, you're like, oh, okay, this is connected to this, and then you go to anatomy lab, and you're actually able to feel it and see it, and it helps connect everything. We actually had anatomy lab at 8 in the morning, so then I would wake up two hours before, I would make some coffee, and I would read the material and do visible bodies like at the same time, so by the time I went to lab, I knew what I was looking at. So I'm a little backwards, so I needed to first see the cadavers to then understand the visible body in a way. Just because for me, it was a little hard to get used to the fact that everyone's anatomy was, is different and I think that's something that we kind of don't inherently think about is that people's veins are displaced differently, arteries mm -hmm. are displaced differently. Some people have very tiny stomachs, like we saw a stomach that oh, we like swore we swore that the patient had like a, a, a lap band done, but mm -hmm. they didn't. It was just their stomach size. Um, and stuff like that, like I needed to see it first and then, so that when I went to visible body, I would see that same structure and I'd be like, oh, I remember on client one mm -hmm. that this stomach actually looked different or this vein actually looked different and it helped me kind of click in that way. About visible bodies, like I said, it's an app. So if you want, you can even take your iPad into the cadaver lab and kind of look at visible bodies at the same time that you're doing uh, the dissecting or looking at the bodies. I did not do that because I thought that was um, a little gross in my opinion. <laughs> I don't want my iPad anywhere near our cadaver lab. So what you can also do is you can take screenshots of the, the portion of the app and you can write on it. So if you want to look at it, let's say you're doing the back and you can take a screenshot of all the back and you can actually write down um, all the muscles and you can kind of test yourself in that way and that's one way that I studied for lab because lab is all about recognition you have to be able to identify that specific muscle in different bodies so um, visible bodies really helped especially when it came to our lab practicals yeah and just be sure that y'all follow your school's rules when it comes to bringing mm -hmm. in 
um, phones or iPads or whatever into Cadaver Lab because there are very special rules that you have to follow. You are not able to take pictures of clients. That is very um, disrespectful. disrespectful to the client, disrespectful to that family, disrespectful mm -hmm. just in general. So be sure to follow your school's policy. We were allowed to bring in our iPad, but I would personally stick it in a Ziploc bag mm -hmm. or something like that if you really want to. I also did not feel comfortable doing that just because it would get kind of... Uh, dirty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you have to remember when you're in anatomy lab, you're dissecting, right? So your elbows and in deep into a, into a client and you're trying to figure out what you're looking at. And so you're touching everything. And yes, you can go ahead and change your gloves. The source that we have access to is Michigan Blue Link. So the University of Michigan has these pictures of cadavers that uh, is perfectly dissected like these people are surgically trained to mm -hmm. go in dissect everything like down to the muscle to where there's like you don't have to cut even more and it's a great resource to go ahead and see different cadavers see what their anatomy looks like and it was just another way to recognize in the body like how it's going to look mm -hmm. and what it's attached to and you could reflect the muscles yeah. and it was pretty it was a very nice tool I also use that to study for the practical. So what they have is they have them actually in PowerPoint form. So they have one PowerPoint that doesn't just has like boxes and it's pointing to structures. And then the other PowerPoint, they have the answers to all those structures. So what I would do is I would print, uh, download both of them and I would look at one, I would answer all of them and then I would check my answers with it just to make sure that I was doing everything correctly. Same, I did that too, and I did that a lot with the models just because mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure my spelling was correct because spelling did count for us for our practicals, which makes sense. Like when you're documenting in the chart, you're not gonna write, you're not gonna spell it incorrectly, and the insurance is gonna look at you and be like, why did you misspell that? Mm -hmm. So we were counted for spelling, and I felt like writing it out on my iPad was just a way for me to make sure that I knew how to spell it. And I am a terrible speller, thank God for spell check. So I actually had to write everything about three to four times. Um, so like I said, we had a checklist. So from the checklist, I would write every single thing down multiple times. And I, could, I think I even have it somewhere on my iPad. If I find it, I'll show it to you guys. How many times I spelled every single thing. It takes a while, but if you're a bad speller and spelling counts, every point counts. So that's why I would do it and it helped. I mean, I think my lowest grade for a practical was a 90, so it helps guys. And do you wanna explain how our practicals kind of were set up? Yes, so our program has practicals done a little differently. So basically, we as students were assigned to groups. So mm -hmm. each group of 10 would go in to dissect. And we had six clients from the fall semester and basically what we would do is one group would start off with a cadaver and the second group would come in. We had lab for two hours and 40 minutes. Yeah. So after our time was up, the next group of 10 would come in and they would dissect after what we had dissected. Mm -hmm. So basically our whole class worked together to dissect all six clients. And then what would happen was the professors the day before the practical would go in and tag what we had already mm -hmm. tagged. So while we were going in and dissecting, we were also meant to tag each muscle, each nerve, each artery, anything that was on the checklist, we needed to tag. And we made sure that to write everything down. So we mm -hmm. had um, really big white sheets of paper mm -hmm. right next to every client. And somebody was always in charge of writing things down. And we made sure all of that was spelled correctly. Um, so every number would go with what we found mm -hmm. and other classes, like for example, if I tagged something and it was mis uh, misspelled or it was incorrect, they would just cross it out and then write the correct thing on there. That way everybody was kind of looking at the same thing and nobody was getting confused. We also had Saturday tutoring. Mm -hmm. So during Saturday tutoring, they would have the lab open and they would have the tutor in there. Sometimes the professor would be in there as well and we would just go and dissect, uh, try to get ahead for the next week, or we can just go ahead and study. And we took advantage of tutoring 
we would go almost every single weekend and we would just kind of go and make sure that we were understanding what we were looking at. We would quiz each other. And I think that really helped us succeed in anatomy lab. I agree, just because we had had lab on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And so because other people were dissecting Tuesday afternoon and then Thursday, we got to see everything that they dissected on Saturday. And it was kind of like a way for us to like go back and we were able to go and reflect all the muscles and see like what was under what and that helped me a lot. Yeah. So a little bit about the way our practicals worked. So basically we had multiple stations that mm -hmm. were set up around the classroom and we were all divided and we were set to station A, one person station B, station C. We would all start at the same time and we had two minutes to turn around and go to the client and mm -hmm. identify three to four structures on that client and we would have two minutes to do so. After those two minutes were up, we would have to go back to the wall mm -hmm. and then move to the next station. They would start the timer again and the same thing would happen. And we were only allowed to do that once. Mm -hmm. So once we had finished on our last station, so say you started at station B, you had to go all the way C, D, E, F, G back to A and A was your last station. You could not go back to station B and look, oh wait, I know I put this on something else. Like it can't be what I put here. Mm -hmm. That wasn't allowed for us. You had to just go based on what you saw. That was anatomy lab. Now we're going to move on to anatomy lecture. The way that we study for a lecture is a little bit different. For lecture, you need to know the muscle, the innervation, the blood supply, the origin, the insertion, and of course the action of every single muscle. So what we did is that we actually created a little chart and it had everything on there. Is it time consuming? Yes. Is it worth it though? Yes. yes. <laughs> so we didn't do it for every single module. Um, we only did it, I think, for the first and the second module. Mm -hmm. um, but I'll go things that we did was that we used a chart. There was other things that we used that kind of helped us a little bit more. So I used the PowerPoints that they provided. They were very wordy. However, you just kind of have to listen to what the professor is saying, highlight what you think is key, and then make your own notes out of it. So that's kind of what I would do is I would try to listen as much as I could in lecture, highlight what I thought was important. So if the professor was like, hey guys, you should probably listen to this, or this is very high yield, I would definitely highlight that and keep it in mind. That way I can study that for the test. And what was nice for me at least was being able to link a model photo mm -hmm. to what we would see in Cadaver Lab. Because yeah. what was really cool was that you see these muscles and you're thinking like, how does that action reflect on that muscle? Mm -hmm. But you could go to Cadaver Lab and you could sometimes manipulate that muscle and you would see how the client's body would move in mm -hmm. reaction to that muscle. Yeah. And I really think that helped me personally when it came to some of the actions because there's a lot. And you're mm -hmm. thinking like, how does that one muscle do that one thing? And I think it was just helpful in that way. Yeah, and another thing that you have to keep in mind is that anatomy I hate to say it, but it is a lot of memorization and recognition. So one thing that I would highly recommend is making your own mnemonics or talking it out with people because that really helps. So if you think of something really dumb and y'all are laughing about it, then you're gonna keep remembering it. So whenever it comes out in the test, you're gonna be like, oh yeah, I remember this person said this about this muscle. That was funny. And then you'll go ahead and remember. Uh, remember it and there's so many funny mnemonics that we had had we had made up so many for each mm -hmm. of the back muscles so much transversing running in America like I still remember that and that was fall semester yeah. like it it really helps if y'all are able to make mnemonics out of things mm -hmm. so it just depends on your program however our program or our professors really they would do a review for us and one of the things that they really like to do was their own jeopardy so what I would do is I would get the question that they had and then I would link it to a picture that I would find on my visible bodies or on their PowerPoint presentation. And that is kind of how I would test myself to make sure that I understood the question and what picture it went with. Because remember, I'm a very visual person. So I have to be able to visualize it and that really helped me. I would use her notes a lot because she did a great job. Mm -hmm. I know we're going to put a little thing over here to kind of show y'all what she would do. Um, I would help her do them for like the later modules. Hey, I don't like, okay. But she didn't like the way I did it and she can explain why. I'm very particular on how I like things done and yes, PA school is all about helping each other 
and I'm all about that. However, when it came to anatomy, I liked it done a particular way, especially when it came to the Jeopardies and the pictures. I needed everything to have a picture and for everything to be a specific color and she wasn't doing it the way that I wanted to and that's completely fine. However, that's how I wanted it to be done. And so I told everybody in my group, I was like, hey, don't worry about anatomy, I got you guys. Um, you guys help me with the other parts of the review, but when it comes to the Jeopardy and to pictures, I have to do it by myself. <laughs> this gave y'all a really good idea for how to study for anatomy, lab and lecture. Like we said from the beginning, it is a very different kind of course that you need to study for. Mm -hmm. And hopefully our little tips and tricks help you so that you don't have to go a month into lab or lecture and be confused. So, oh, and also don't let anatomy, don't leave it to the last minute. I know it might be like an easy course. For us, it was only two credits, um, but anatomy will catch up to you. It will, it's a lot. It's a lot of muscles, it's a lot of nerves and arteries. And if you wait till the last minute, you will definitely be regretting it. Um, it's not like your anatomy undergrad course. It's completely different. It's that times 10. So just make sure that you set aside a couple of hours a day, maybe one hour a day or two hours right before your lab that you, that you have and study for it continuously. And by the time that you get to your exam, it won't seem as much. Yeah, that's really important because I know a lot of our classmates and I'm going to admit like I'm guilty for it too, <laughs> like especially that first exam for me because I was still getting used to PA yeah. school, it really came up so quickly for me mm -hmm. that I didn't prepare as well as I should have and it really reflected when I got my first grade back. And I remember talking to her and I was like, how? <laughs> I can't do it. I can't do it. And she was like, calm down, calm down. It's okay. We're, we're going to work together on the second one. Like, don't worry. And then she helped me out mm -hmm. and I figured it out. And she's absolutely right. You need to make sure that you're keeping up with your classes, not just anatomy, but clinical medicine, pathology, pharmacology. Like it's Everything. so important. I know it's a lot of courses, but you have to keep up with it. It, it takes discipline, but you got this. You can do it. Really, you get to study medicine. <laughs> That's what they keep telling us during our academy before school started. It's like, and it's true. It's like, we get to do this. Mm -hmm. You know, we have the opportunity. There are so many people that want to be in our shoes and we need to show that we're grateful for the opportunities that we have. We're the ones that got picked to get in and mm -hmm. just make it count guys. Like it's two and a half years of your life. And it's going to go by really quickly. Like we're already almost done with didactic year and I'm still in shock that it's already been a year. That's crazy. It's crazy. Like y'all can do this. Like that finish line, it'll come faster than you mm -hmm. can even imagine. Yeah, so I hope that you enjoyed this video, this anatomy video, and hopefully this helped answer some of your questions. And if you have any more questions, feel free to comment down below or go ahead and send us an email. Yeah, you can even DM us on Instagram, on our PA Diaries Instagram, and like, comment, and subscribe, and we really look forward to seeing y'all next time. Bye! Bye.